two, three, four. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Power of Music Thinking. My name is Christoph Zürn, and this is the podcast for people with a musical heart and a wicked job. We're looking for stories, insights, and tools from the big world of music to inspire leaders and followers to listen, tune, play, and perform in whatever field you're operating. From the wild punk scene in New York and London of the 70s to a sound healing practice in Los Angeles, my guest today is Jennifer Palladino, also called Dr. Jen, a doctor of chiropractic, the regional director of the U Rock Foundation, and a holistic health facilitator connecting mind, body, and spirit with chiropractic sound therapy. Her musical experiences span from being a young performer wrangler at the American Ballet Theater, while Mikhail Baryshnikov was artistic director, to working in the music industry and a mastering studio in New York, to the legendary Marquee Club in London, where she made friends with members of the punk and new wave scene. We talk about a rich life in music, from the impact of the Beatles, the power of punk, and an orchestra of instruments that she uses in her sound healing practice. Jennifer shares with us some music hacks, like how different frequencies resonate with our body, which contains 75% of water, and how she uses tuning forks with slightly different frequencies to produce binaural sounds in a sound bathing session. And she explains the full moon performances she's doing as the sound healers on the Hollywood Cemetery, where Rodolfo Valentino and Judy Garland rest. Okay, let's dive into it. Welcome, Dr. Jen. Welcome to The Power of Music Thinking. Thank you so much for having me, Christoph. It's a pleasure. Okay, so let's start with the beautiful question of music thinking. Uh, what was your first sonic experience or record album or concert performance that had an impact on you? Ah, I think a lot of people can relate to this. I grew up in New York and in uh, in Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn. And in 1963, 64, I mean, what was it all about? The Beatles. Oh. And so I was three years old. But my exposure to the music was interesting. Um, my mom was, was very... Um, even though she's she's pretty proper, she was very open. And, you know, in the 60s at that time, it was changing. Things were changing, especially that early in the 60s. But she allowed my sister and I, my sister was two years older than me, uh, to listen to all the Beatles we wanted. And, of course, that branched out from there. But we... I remember going to the movie theater and seeing A Hard Day's Night and my dad had to get up and leave because it was too intense with all the girls <laughs> screaming. And I clearly remember watching the Beatles the first time they were on Ed Sullivan. Um, so I, that was so impactful. And, it, and I, when I think of Beatle music now, it was, It's a happy place for me. And I'm sure, like I said, a lot of people can relate. So that that was it. And it was New York. So it's really, wow, big Intense. city. And yes. also for them, it was, um, was it the first time that they uh, played in, in the US? Yes, I think, um, well, the, the first time was Shea Stadium. I mean, the no, actually, they were on um, Ed Sullivan, but... From there, I think they went on tour, but in that mix was Shea Stadium. We were too little to go, but <laughs> but I wish, you know. Uh, still heavy, heavy influence. I had my little John Lennon doll that was kind of <laughs> rubber with doll hair. And I mean, he was, we 
we took him into the bathtub with us. I mean, it was, <laughs> so, so we, I always define myself as a beetle baby. I was a beetle baby. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. And also, did you also follow them later when they went into, I, I just saw a documentary where they've been in India and all these influences. Did, did you follow this? Yes, actually, what happened was I my mom's brother um, was 13 years older than me. So he wasn't like much older, but he was still, you know, at that time, that age where the influence was huge on he and his generation. And so, of course, he would turn us on as as little kids. He would bring us all the albums. He would buy two and give us one. And so. Wow. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. And, you know, I think when growing up with the Beatles, you turn to a lot of that music. It was so impressive. And um, I guess such it took, was having such an impact in the world and, and you're even on your own world. So you you turn to the Beatle, Beatle music a lot through your emotions, through your, your happiness, your sadness. I had a friend who, um, when I was nine years old, she and her brother and her sister died in a fire. And Ooh. I turned to the Beatle music because I, I don't know what I would have done emotionally if I didn't have that music to bring me through. And another note is, the reason my mom was so encouraging for us to listen to that music because it was such happy music was because my dad was suffering with a mental illness mm -hmm. and it got very intense around the house. So she would divert our, our attention onto the music and, and keep us out of that mix. So I really, and still do turn to Beatle music for a lot of, you know, emotional connection. Yeah, yeah I, I also hear the the health uh, aspect, and that's yeah. So, Jen, uh, Doctor Jen, I have to say, <laughs> what do you do for a living? And yeah, who are you? Tell us a little bit more uh, about what you do and your story. Well, I'm a doctor of chiropractic in private practice for 33 years uh, in Southern California, and. I'm also a sound healer. Uh, I've you I use sound with my patients to address a lot multitude of issues, whether it's depression, anxiety, or a physical issue like temporomandibular, you know, jaw problems, mm -hmm. um, migraines, uh, all sorts of of um, you know because physical illness and physical manifestations come from somewhere, not just the body. A lot of times it's, it's mind provoked and our thoughts and emotions are very much integrated with what we experience physically. So I noticed that over time and I thought, okay, let's address body, mind, and spirit. Mm. And that's why I brought the sound healing into the practice. Wow. And how do you do this? So what would be a typical healing healing session? By the way, it pops in, in my mind when we talk about healthcare, it's it's about health, it's about the hospital, but in sound it's it's already healing so what do you heal so i really would be <laughs> i'm really curious in how, how how does it work and how long are you doing your treatment hmm, okay uh, i'll start with an example i have a patient lovely gal and she was um uh in a car accident when she was pregnant and so not only did her she hurt her back and neck, but the trauma was, um, you know, of course she was pregnant and she experienced such a fright. So mm -hmm. not only did I address her physical issues through chiropractic, physical therapy, 
Um, I do I do some different types of technique, chiropractic technique. I do some non-force technique called sacrooccipital technique, and I use a lot what of is it? Sacrooccipital technique. It's, yeah. It's um uh, what what happens in the neck and in the cranium. Uh, you can correspond it to the lower aspects of the lumbar or the low back and mm -hmm. sacrum. So there's a lot of balancing that that goes on there. Um, a lot of nerve restoration. Uh, you're trying to to really untorque the body and balance it. And and, and there's a lot of non force techniques that I use along with the the um, traditional manipulate manipulation. So so I worked certainly on those physical aspects of of her and her condition, but the stress and the anxiety was so outrageous that even though she had already given birth to her child, her child was you know two years old. She was mm -hmm. she was still experiencing this deep deep fear. So what I do is I separate sometimes. I'll separate the treatment and I'll just do the physical aspect and then we'll do the sound healing. And it's a one-on-one -on -one sound healing. I have an orchestra of, of instruments, gongs, uh, sets of Tibetan bowls, bells, chimes, crystal bowls, drums, um, ocean drums and uh, Kochi chimes and um, you name it. <laughs> it's in yeah, there. yeah, you name it, literally. <laughs> <laughs> but also, too, Christoph, a really important part of the one-on-one -on -one sound healing, I use sets of tuning forks. Mm. And because with the tuning forks, you can really take that patient down through that the brain states. So just a little note about brain state frequencies, um, like you and I are talking here. So we're engaged. Mm. We're in that our brain is has a, a frequency of 13 to 30 hertz. But when someone go, either meditates or goes through a sound healing, you want to bring those those brain states down, the frequency down into uh, uh, like, for example, alpha, which is eight to 12 hertz, or theta, which is four to eight hertz. By bringing that person's brain state down right above sleep, you can really influence their sense of peace. Mm. It's almost like it's almost like a guided meditation. Mm -hmm. It's almost like someone holding your hand and taking you there through the instrumentation yeah. which is great but the the i've found with my patients because i do group sound healings too and you really can't get as deep as a one-on-one -on -one with tuning forks and that's real difficult to do when you have a group of huh, could be you know 50 60 people but wow, a one-on-one -on -one, so many. yeah oh yeah a one-on-one -on -one using those sets of tuning forks, and they range from, you know, an endocrine set, so your hormonal organs, there's a frequency of each hormonal organ, and you can use those tuning forks to address that aspect. How do you do this? Do, do you, you hit the fork, and then you come closer, and by the way, Second question is, yes. you, you just talked about 13 to 30 hertz, and then you try to bring it down from 8 to 12, but that's a very, very low sound. Well, it's not so much sound, but it's a brain state. So it's how the brain, the frequency of the brain. So when we go into sleep with Delta, we're in a delta brain state, and that's less than four hertz. Okay. But you really want to keep that person, that patient, their brain state right above that, because in that, in that frequency, you can really influence a person. I mean, this it's a subconscious mm -hmm. 
mm. mind. And the subconscious mind is extremely, um, you know, influential. You can really influence yourself, change habits, change how you think. And so by bringing them to me, that's a very vulnerable state. Yeah. So my room is very quiet, very protected, quiet from outside sound, which can sometimes get difficult. But that being said, I have the patient set up in a couple of ways. Either they're lying face up or face down on the chiropractic table because I have a special sound room where I have an, another chiropractic table. And either that or I have them on the floor with I call the crown of Tibetans, hmm. all the Tibetan bowls around their heads sp specifically placed. Hmm. Sometimes I'll put the bowls on the body. I also use crystals, palm stones that they hold. But with the tuning forks, I position myself above the head of the patient and I use a tuning fork that is a constant. And then I bring in the other tuning forks and I take them down with each, with each tap. And then I switch the tuning fork to the next one lower and I'll, mm. I'll bring it and I'll cross and, and bring the, the, um, tuning forks back and forth on different sides of their head. So then this way, it's almost like, I don't know, binaural beats, mm -hmm. you know, you get the binaural beats. And you but can... maybe, maybe not all listeners know what binaural beats uh, are. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can explain it. <laughs> Uh, I, well, with, with tuning forks is one tuning fork with say a frequency of, I just for argument's sake, 50 and mm -hmm. another tuning fork with the frequency of 55. Yeah. So the, the 50 and, and the 55, it cancels out the 50 and you get a five. Uh, yeah. Hurts. And, and do you get then a, 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 some kind of wobbly sound or just a different sound? It's it's a I, it's hard to explain. I think it's um it's almost like a wobbly sound, but that frequency back and forth where you cancel out and then you have that basic can take you into that theta because it's mm. five hertz the difference. So mm. it can take you into that theta. And these sets are all designed um, to to really uh, bring that person into a state of mind where they're completely calm, they're a bit vulnerable, but I'm there to protect them. I mm. make sure that the peace is very deep. You know, um, a lot of times too, even when I go to sound baths, group sound baths, and I experience that, I find that um, I'm guarded. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I protect myself because it's almost like this, this thing where you're, you're worried about being that vulnerable. And so sometimes I go so deep and then I <gasps> like this because mm -hmm. I realize, oh my gosh, I have to stay, where am I? You know? So, um, but I, I try and, and make a very, um, uh, relaxing, protective environment for that patient. Now, what's interesting, which, which I found, which no one had told me about before this experience of treating patients through sound was more than one occasion. I've had patients tell me that they've had, um, visitations visitations from past, you know, passed on relatives mm. from, from beings who they didn't recognize messages that they got from these, these spirits, I guess you could say. Yeah. I'm just a facilitator. So yeah, I don't right. judge. Could you explain of, it? How this comes? What this could be? I, I can maybe explain it with a, an example. I had a patient, a, a fella, he was a guy, he was a drummer. So he was really 
agitated and he couldn't sit still without tapping, you know, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> okay, let's see what I can do here. Cause I, I wasn't sure that he would respond in a positive way, you know? Mm. Yeah. So I told him, I said, you know what? I said, you'll, you'll sense me around the room, but don't, don't even worry about that. This is for your own experience. So just, just relax and enjoy. So I went through the sound healing. I used the tuning forks. I used the bowls. I used my gongs. And afterwards, I brought him out very gently because that's the last thing you want to do after being so deep in that meditative state is like <laughs> to jump up, right? So yeah. I, I brought him out very gently. And he sat up and he said, that was interesting. I said, oh, he says, yes. Um, he said, um, I, I was met by this male being. He says, I, I didn't recognize him. He didn't look familiar. I didn't know him, but he seemed to have known me. And I said to him, what is the meaning of all this? And the being or the spirit said, it's utilization of time. How you utilize your time on earth. Now that could have been just a message for him, but he said then he was met by a female spirit joining him. And it was a very, I guess, relaxing, um, opening up. And then his father joined him in this. Mm. Now, his dad had just passed away one year and one day before we did this session. So he came out and he says, I recognize my father, but I didn't recognize these other two beings. A week later, Christoph, his mom came to me for a session because he said it was wonderful. So mm -hmm. she came to me for a session uh -huh. and she told me this. She said, you know, I never shared this with my son, but he had two siblings that died, oh. a sister and a brother. Oh. And I said to her, you know, maybe it's time you share this. So in that hindsight, apparently it was these these spirits of his siblings and then his father joined um so that was really kind of to me a profound experience when it comes to sound healing and you know i suppose meeting meeting your your loved ones yeah beautiful 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 I want to say story, but I don't know if it's a story. It's a beautiful experience. experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And also I can feel so in the way you explain the sound bathing, I really can yeah, nearly literally feel. So it's 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 around you. And we, we often say that um, sound is touching from a distance. So you don't touch people like uh, with a massage or, or, or as a chiropractor to, mm -hmm. to manipulate uh, someone. So sound is touching from a distance and maybe very soft and gives also literally space to, to, to be. Yes. Well, they say, you know, every single organ in our body it has been mapped out and has a frequency. So I, I find that very interesting. Mm. I mean, down, down to the smallest of structures in our body, each one has, has a frequency. So it makes sense why music moves us. Yeah. Especially because of, um, you know, I mean, we're, we're made up of 70, 75% water and we flow. Um, it, it's funny how people gravitate toward what they find heals. Mm. Very interesting stuff. I also do, well, I do a couple of group, monthly group, group sessions. I do one at a yoga studio, a local yoga studio. And it's amazing how many people have never experienced a sound bath, never experienced sound healing. And it's my pleasure when they say, I says, oh, just show me hands. Is this your first? And, <sighs> and so many hands go up and I, I'm so pleased because my experience when I first, um, I first was drawn to, to a sound healing, it was like 
it was like going to a concert. You got so excited. Uh. <laughs> you couldn't wait to get there just to lie down and be feel all these 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 sounds affect your body so and bring you into wonderful places and sometimes not wonderful. So mm. I had an experience okay. where, like I said, I, for me, I'm I'm guarded. I'm trying to get through this, <laughs> and I'm guarded. And and the gongs were played. And these gongs, I mean, this woman has like I trained with her. She's she must have close to fifty gongs. I'm not kidding. Wow. Massive gongs. Just it's where gong work is very much profound than than the other work with bells and chimes and, and bowls. This gal uses gongs and crystal bowls and where it takes you is it's it's like a trip. It's mm. like a, I don't want to say a drug trip, but it's like a drug trip. Yeah. <laughs> better. Yeah. Better. Because it's your brain doing the work. Right. There's no, yeah, the outside influence, it, 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 it's, it's quote unquote music or, mm. you know, sound. Um, but I'm just again, thinking about um, when nowadays younger people go to, let's say, a rave or to an electronic dance <laughs> festival. And I also know this from 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 my girls um, that they sometimes take something, and uh, and I always feel like, oh, is this good? Is this controlled? So the the typical parents, father, uh, mother uh, questions, and I im I think well, maybe this would be a good idea to to start with a sound bath, <laughs> and then Absolutely. just get into it. Oh, wow, that's a Absolutely. good idea. Maybe someone can pick it from us. <laughs> You know, what would be a great idea is to find some some sound bath near you, Christoph, and have your girls go and then mm. come back and tell you their experience with it. Because, you know, as long as you make it and say to them, just don't do anything. What is your personal feeling without any other outside influence, right? Any drugs or whatever, enhancers, what have you, to see what they think. Because my, my group, keeps getting bigger and bigger people mm. are hearing about sound baths and sound healings and they're flocking because everybody wants to calm down <laughs> everybody needs to relax and to get rid of stress these are the best stress stress healers yeah. sound baths i also do this i'm part of an ensemble with this fabulous group of um sound healers at uh -huh. Hollywood Forever Cemetery out here in in Hollywood, California, um, we have Hang a very on. you 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 play at the Hollywood yeah. Cemetery. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I have to say though, this cemetery is very unusual because they have crazy great events. There's so many famous people from old Hollywood and everybody up to you know. Johnny and Dee Dee Ramone from the Ramones and Chris Cornell from Soundgarden and all these actors and a lot of people are buried at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Mm. And um, I guess as of like 30, 35 years ago, the new owners decided, hey, you know, let's celebrate. And they have all sorts of events. They do yoga on the grounds. They have um, a big celebration for the Day of the Dead. Huge, huge weekend wow. celebration. Yes. They have summer movies that they project <laughs> up on the side of the huge mausoleum. People bring their <laughs> picnic dinners and their lounge chairs and blankets, and they spread out on the grounds among, <laughs> among the mausoleums. Yeah, it's really kind of neat. And That's interesting. So, in 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 that sense, the the cemetery comes closer to life. So it's not just a place where you never want to go and never want to be. It's just a place from that is there, and there's a relation, and you bring your life and your liveliness to to a place where people um, found their rest that were lively before. Yes, and it's it's a type of celebration. I mean, Judy Garland is buried there. Um, Rudolph Valentino, he's oh, wow. buried there with lipstick prints all over his his <sighs> stone. <laughs> so uh, we we do these huge sound baths with 
60, 70 people in the cathedral mausoleum in the back. And um, the sound is amazing because of <laughs> it just reverberates and right. echoes throughout the the um the mausoleum and are you so you don't even hear the attacks from when you hit the gong oh yeah it's beautiful and then i thought gee who has bird sounds no there's a nest of birds up in the so so it's just beautiful and we we do these on full moons and so when there's a full moon and you have to go to the bathroom you have to walk through the cemetery <laughs> in the dark and you hear the peacocks screaming and there's a million cats it's just such a cool place i always take anybody who comes to visit me in in la i always take them to hollywood forever cemetery because it's such a cool place but yeah we do sound healing there's there and it's pretty profound stuff wow you know i, I never thought about this and I never think about going to a cemetery, <laughs> but now I really have the idea when I come to LA, <laughs> there, <laughs> there's a place <laughs> to go, especially when there's, um, there's a full moon. Yes. What, what I um, recognize and the instruments that you mentioned are all metallic instruments, right? So, well, the... there's crystal bowls. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. There's crystal bowls. Uh, there's ocean drums and, and people are like, what's that? Well, it sounds like an ocean. It's almost like a big tambourine. Mm, yeah. And there's all these Some kind of rice or little pearls in it. Ball bearings. Yeah. Ah. And so, you know, you, you, you kind of move it in a way and you can create ocean sound. And it's funny, Christoph, most people, I say, what, what is, what was your favorite part of the sound bath? And they're like, oh, it's that part that sound like the ocean mm. but i had one gal say to me that part scared me the most i said why huh? she says because i have a fear of water wow so it's interesting because especially in group settings you can never tell who who has who feels what i like to ask and i tell her i like i told that girl i says you know what I said, maybe that's something to work on your fear of water and you can do it through using mm, yeah. the ocean drum. So she was, oh, I never thought of that. I said, yes, because if you get accustomed to that sound and we can, we can bring in other pleasant sounds so you can have some kind of reference mm. and yet still hear the ocean, you can learn to find peace in that sound and so that may help it's very multi-dimensional sound healing yeah and if you would explain this to this person because it's an instrument it's not the the the, the c it's just something that resonates or sounds like like the sea and it's this always uh, also reminds me when when i work with uh, with teams and then more in the business setting i always say i have the hypothesis that the way you listen to music or the way you listen is also the way how you listen to your partner to your client to society and that reminds me a lot so um, if there is something special in listening and it has to do with let's say earlier experiences or or maybe you just like certain things more or less then you will all in in that sense let's say biased or um you have some yeah some things resonate with you and others won't and i think it's and and it's not a good or a bad thing it's just interesting to know that it is and 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 yeah and and, and try to find people um where you can listen together and everyone's different. Everybody is different. Everybody's unique to what triggers them, what calms them, what diverts their attention, where they can focus. I think sound healing, and I have to say one-on-one -on -one sound healing is mm. really, you know, because it's specific to that person. It's just a really great way of not only um, 
not only addressing like your stress levels, but you can actually make a lot of profound changes in your emotions um, with it, which is great. I also encourage my patients and I also use this in my sound healings group and one-on-ones is the sound of silence. Mm. So for example, I have these great Tibetan bowls. It's like, they, I think for me, I resonate, pardon the pun, mostly with those Tibetans, mm. the Tibetan bowls. But when I strike a Tibetan bowl, I really try and allow that frequency to run to its extent. Because it's in that frequency that, that you find peace. But when that frequency ends and it trails off into the distance, that profound bit of silence afterwards is almost like the period at the end of the sentence. Hmm. It, it punctuates the sound, but it allows it to set. And so I, I find I use a lot of silence after sounds to really, I guess, emphasize the effect of that sound. Yeah, and sounds so, don't don't stop immediately. It sounds die away. So there's always in 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 synthesizers. We always talk about the ADSR, the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. So a sound has a beginning, a middle, and, and an end. And and then when sounds fade out, then there's that moment where you think, is it still sounding, or is it silence? And that's that's very very relieving. I'll give you a Beatle reference. So I, I'm, I'm assuming we, we're pretty familiar with the Beatles music. So on the uh, Sgt. Pepper album, the very last song, A Day in the Life, that last note that they play, which is long and sustaining, Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how aggravated I get when I hear it on the radio <laughs> and they just cut the end off. Yes. <laughs> it's so unbelievable. <laughs> no no yep. patience to listen to the end of songs. <laughs> But that note, because I mean, for me, that song was is super profound and brings a lot of emotion because I was seven years old when I heard it. And there was a lot of, you know, I guess, memories and remembrance throughout that time for me. But when I hear that sound, I'm it's the final note of the song and you're feeling the emotion of the song and then to have it cut off. So I try and listen to the end and yeah. then some. Yeah, yeah. So it makes it just that much more amazing. Yeah. That was interesting because Sgt. Pepper, was it the first real studio um, recording of the Beatles where they brought in a lot of instruments, a lot of um, experimentation also of the, let's say, the studio as an, as an instrument? I think George was already uh, playing with the sitar stuff before that, I want to say. I'm not really sure. Uh, but I have a feeling because d doesn't he play on Norwegian wood? And wasn't that on Rubber Soul, which was before Sarge? Um, I think so. Um, uh, yeah. Also with the with the sitar. But um, I mean more um, the there's also orchestra, different instruments, and and you also see it on the cover of Sarge and Pepper, yes. where all these influences are. And I think on the top right, the third from the left um, is uh, Karlheinz Stockhausen. And he was uh, he he was a, a composer, a, a modern contemporary composer, and he and I think they uh, they there's a reference to him uh, about his work, and I think that's interesting because, yeah, that's really for normal pop listeners really far out, um, but it's a reference on the, um, at least a, a, a picture reference on the Sgt. Pepper cover. There's a lot of reference yeah, in that Sgt. Many, Pepper much cover. Many. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. I even saw a, a Frank Zappa documentary. Such a genius that man was. God rest his soul. And and he did a, I guess a tongue in cheek kind yeah. of <laughs> thing to the Sgt. Pepper album, but his own spin, 
which yeah. was very much fun, you know, in, in all of Enough. the Frank Zappa uh, style. You, you, but, know, yeah. you know the name of the record? It's yeah, we're only in it for the money. That's right. We're only in it for the money. That's it. <laughs> and, and it's like dressing up. Uh, it's like a persiflage. And, and I think maybe that's maybe that's the the nicest compliment that you can can do to make a persiflage in your way, but actually you're honoring what they did. Nice. Yeah, I, I know that he was he was a little apprehensive or the record company was that maybe that they were going to be sued by the Beatles. But it was like, no, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> you know, maybe they had a big laugh about it. <laughs> maybe. I'm, I'm sure. I know he he must have. But uh, hey, but um, yeah. t talking about uh, Beatles, Frank Zappa and, and references, um, you also you, you also have your own podcast. I and do. And um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. It's called Rock and Healthy Lifestyles. And I have conversations with popular musicians, actors, performing artists, and they talk about their life's ups and downs, career ups and downs, what sparks their creative juices and how they stay healthy and happy in body, mind and spirit. Yeah, nice. So that's yeah, also inspiring for, for let's say, non-musicians, for people that are have stress in in other areas to 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 listen to it. And um, and, and it's about that's also the 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 link with rock music because in in the in the seventies end of the seventies you lived in London. I did, yes, in a very crazy time. It was brief, but it was <laughs> it was um. It was definitely an eye opener. Um, I had a boyfriend and he worked at the Marquee Club, the, the very famous Marquee Club. So he got me a job there. And it was a 1979, 1980. It was a, a they, I guess I want to say post punk, but mm -hmm. it was definitely punk infiltrated and new wave, of, right? So the, the first it new was wave right, groups right on the crest but it was over there more so it was a, i guess a blend of punk and mod and mm, nobody mm -hmm. liked each other so they were kind of reviving <laughs> okay. that punk mm. that you know mod and rockers kind of thing from the 60s but but you know loving music you just and coming from america i just loved it all i would i would go to mod night i would i would go to you know see um bands like Chelsea and um, Soft Boys and Pointed Sticks and and all these mod bands uh, would would come and play and so it was a lot of fun uh, my my ex-boyfriend he also worked for Ian Hunter uh, mm. lead singer of Mott the Hoople but at that time Ian and Mick Ronson were playing together so I got to go on tour with them Hey, bit. that's the Mick Ronson from uh, David Bowie. David Bowie. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. What a lovely and talented individual. Yeah. He was really, and a really good person. You know, I, I ended up having a nice friendship with him and I knew his mother. <laughs> <laughs> Very important. <laughs> so yeah, you get the whole course. context of a person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never met his sister, though. I know he was close with his sister, but he spoke mm. of her often. So, so it was nice to, to be able to be in that mix and then come, come back to New York. And I, I, I grew up in a time where there was, especially in New York, 76, I was 16 and we were down in the clubs, Max's Kansas city and, um, and CBGB's of course, mud club, the great Gildersleeves club 57, oh. all those clubs where, where it was, you know, people were making fun of the Ramones at the time. <laughs> but, um, and then of course we saw the big arena shows at Madison square garden, Nassau Coliseum. And I saw everybody saw Led Zeppelin five times and, oh. you know, just all those bands, the who, when Keith was alive and of course the stones a million times, it was just, it was just a great, great time. I worked in the music industry um, for a mastering studio, master disc, you know, had different jobs in the music industry. And so it was it was a good time.
So Jennifer, you really lived music early on. And uh, when when hearing all these all these bands like Led Zeppelin, uh, Bad Company, or so that's really more heavy stuff. And hey. that's interesting that that uh, yeah that at the yeah that at a certain moment all of these influences, these sounds, all these uh, frequencies uh, come together in uh, a gyro gyropractic <laughs> and a sound <laughs> healing, sound bathing, and still yeah. and still having good remembrance to the to 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 the to that uh, kind of music that's really yeah beautiful to hear well i i think um it it excites it excites me and it moves me and it has since i'm a little child um i had the exposure like i said of my older uncle so i i was really turned on to a lot of music growing up in new york i have just some basic music skills that I went to music school, piano school. But for example, when you're in New York and you're in piano school and you go on trips, you go to places like the Metropolitan Opera House. Wow. And 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 so, you know, the, I don't know, Hansel and Gretel, that mm. was your, your outing. So the influence, because of where I grew up, New York, and then later on having the London influence was certainly great. And then coming out to California, and I came out here for my studies, my graduate school studies, and then of course stayed here and, and, and I'm in practice. But being out here as well is, um, and then you have a whole different coast of influence. So, so it's, and I love classical music because in the mid 80s, I worked for American Ballet Theater where Mikhail Baryshnikov was artistic director. And so wow. I spent a lot of time as an extra supernumerary and extra in the produ productions, taking care of the kids, both on this West Coast and at the Metropolitan Opera House and watching the greats dance, Baryshnikov, Nureyev, uh, Natalia Makarova, and all the the wonderful ballet companies from around the world. So, um, so I I love I love all sorts of music, jazz and and it's it, music is a healer, and uh, I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to become regional director of the U Rock Foundation. The U Rock Foundation is a music based nonprofit organization that helps people who suffer from anxiety, depression, suicide ideation, and mental health issues. And how we get them, how we help people is we get popular musicians to do video testimonials about how music mm -hmm. has saved their life. So we have band members of Korn, um, a lot of heavy metal, uh, Gemini Syndrome, um, Randy Bly from... Um, Slipknot? Uh, Oh yes, we have Corey Taylor from Slipknot. Okay. So we have a lot of a lot of um, video testimonials, and these these guys and gals, butcher babies, they really talk about their difficulties and how music has saved their life. So being regional director of the U Rock Foundation and interviewing people, musicians about their mental health status and how they use music to to survive and doing my podcast rock and healthy lifestyles i'm really kind of integrating that together with the emphasis of how important music is for mental health oh wow it's a real life of sound and music and silence Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jennifer. So I think we touched a lot. Thank you for all your insights. And I will put everything in the show notes. We have to get um, all, all the links. So when people want to, to, to find and want to know more about and want to see the, the videos, this would be great. But if they want to contact you, what would be the best uh, thing to do? Well, they can go on to my website and contact me there. It's rockandhealthylifestyles.com. That's rock, the letter N, healthylifestyles.com. And reach out to me through, through the email. Or they can follow me on Instagram, rockandhealthylifestyles. 
and even on Facebook, Dr. Jen Palladino. And I have a, a, a group that we all I have a bunch of different people who are part of that group. It's called Music Hacks for Mental Health. And we talk about music and how it affects mental health. And we make suggestions and turn each other on to all sorts of great music. So there's many ways to reach out and I'll be listening. So Jennifer, Dr. Chen, thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you so much for having me, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate this because listening is one of the top leadership skills and I feel honored about this. It is my mission to find, create, and share inspirations for meaningful collaboration based on music analogies. If you want to support this, please subscribe to the podcast, give us a rating, or write a review on iTunes or Spotify. And more inspirations can be found on musicthinking.com. We have a blog, and you can download the Music Thinking Framework. And finally, I would love to hear your feedback. And if you need help with a business challenge, please reach out to me via email podcast at musicthinking.com.